Well, hello, my dears. This is Sarah from SheHoldsDearly.com, and today I'm going to share with you three pieces of furniture that I found at the thrift store. And they look a little bit new to me, and I am going to show you a way to take away from the furniture to make it look old. Now next week, we're gonna look at a couple more pieces of furniture and I'm gonna show you how to add on to that furniture to make it look old. You may remember a long time ago when I found a $9 square, totally boring coffee table and I flipped it upside down and I created a, a large vintage style chicken crate. Now you can buy these chicken crates, they're usually at least 100, maybe up to $300, and people, for a while there, I would see them used as coffee tables. So I got the idea from other bloggers that were already using real chicken crates, these vintage style chicken crates that just look like a crate, but they have it looked like wooden dowels around this rectangle shape. They were a little bit small for my space. So I had in my head that I wanted to create a much larger one and it needed to be square. So I was gonna have to make one because I don't think they come in this size. That's what gave me the idea for this table that I turned upside down. We built a simple top to it. We drilled a bunch of little divots and stuck all these dowels in and I love it. Oh, and we added casters. So I do have a tutorial on that. And the thing that I really love about that is that this house was originally owned by a family called the Swanson family, and they had a chicken business here. They sold thousands and thousands of chicks. And this was back in 1906 when they bought the property and they were known as the Swanson Chicken Farm. I do have a video, a really unique video of meeting the grandson who I think is in his 80s now, maybe 90s now, and we're friends, and I got to show him around the house. He got to answer questions and share his memories of his grandfather in this house. It's a really fun video. But anyway, I've tried several times to go another direction with my coffee table, and the sentimental the sentimental aspect of a chicken crate in the middle of this living room just always like draws me back and I keep this table. What I wanna do today is sort of the part two to the chicken crate coffee table. It still looks a little bit new to me. I wanna age it even more. So I'm going to do that. I also wanna add on this little sign that says Swanson Chicken Farm and it, I am going off this picture, this inspirational picture that I found off Etsy that has the label on it, and I really feel like that's gonna seal the deal for making this look like it truly came, maybe with the house, and it fits the story, and you see it right when you walk in, and it just is a, a good conversation piece. For now, that's what we're gonna have for our coffee table. So that's the first thing. The second thing is my fireside room, which is basically a glorified hallway, and it has given me a lot of trouble over the years trying to figure out how to have good furniture layout in there. So right now I have a couch, and it's actually working the best. And actually, that is a design tip for you that I'm just gonna throw in here for free. If you are dealing with a room that you keep trying to treat like a room and put maybe a dining room table in it, and maybe two recliners or something, and it just feels so bulky and frustrating, it might be because it's actually a hallway. It's a glorified hallway, just like my fireside room. And maybe you just need to put seating against one wall and let the traffic flow. So that's what we're doing right now in my fireside room. But the problem I have is that people will sit down on that couch and then maybe they'll, they'll be eating or they'll be studying and really good seating areas have a spot for everyone sitting to set something down. And I don't really have that in this room and I can't do a coffee table. So what I'm gonna do is use stools. I found these two stools at Goodwill and one of them was assembled. They are the Threshold brand, which is fantastic from Target. My Goodwill actually gets the, the leftovers from Target, which is kind of awesome. Now, they're not like dirt cheap, but they're better than Target prices, so I get lots of great things at my Goodwill that came from Target. So the one in the box came to 29.80, dollars 
and I just checked the prices of these new stools. They're called Halifax counter stools and Wayfair has them for 114 Pottery Barn has them for 100 Target had them for 65 So even though that $30 price tag seems a little high for a thrift store, if you compare it to the retail price, I'm still happy. All right, so we are going to assemble this second stool and then I'm gonna use a technique from jenisudesign.com. I saw this a while back and it was a way that she distressed a stool that was very similar to this, made it look like 100 years old, and then gave it a really great patina. So we're gonna try that entire process on my two stools and my coffee table. Okay, we assembled the stool, and next I wanna show you the four different tools I'm gonna to use to distress this furniture. Let's hope I am not too dangerous. This is a jigsaw. We're going to cut some lines into the wood. This is called a planer, and I'm going to cut some slivers of wood out. Now, Jinisu used a drill, and she had a wire brush on it so she could, like, dig in some lines and grooves in the wood. I don't have a wire brush attachment, so I have just a wire brush. This is used for cleaning a barbecue rack inside, but I use it for cleaning my paintbrushes. That's a little tip for you. Then I'm gonna go over the whole thing and smooth out the really rough edges that I've created with my orbital sander. And we'll finish with two products to give it that Wonderful aged patina. to pop back on here to give you an update. The wire brush idea, no bueno. That doesn't do anything, just skip it. But I am happy with the other three things that we did. The planer, the jigsaw, and then the sanding. Here's what I'm running into. The stool has a type of paint on it and the coffee table has sort of a clear finish. Even the dowels have some type of a clear finish on them. And I want to ignore that and just go forward with my staining and waxing. But the truth is the raw wood, once it is stained and waxed, is so gorgeous that I have to stop. I'm actually postponing the video release because of it. I'm stopping, I'm gonna strip these pieces. We thought about sanding them down, but I don't wanna lose all that great character that we just put into it. So we're actually gonna strip it. I use a product called Citrus Strip. It smells really good, it's this cream you put on and like 30 minutes later you can scrape it off. That's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna put the time in because I love the raw look so much. Here we go. Here's our setback, but it's gonna be better than I expected in the end.
Okay, so I rinsed all of these off after scrubbing it with a steel wool pad. That's really the secret for finishing it off. Dip, keep dipping it in water and then scrub the details until you feel like you've got all of that citrus strip off. And then you're going to let it dry overnight. That's really important. So we let it dry in front of the fire. Today, I'm going to do a light sanding just to knock off any of the little fibers that came up because of that steel wool that I did. And the next day, I came back with driftwood minwax stain. You want to stir stain. You feel like it's watery and you can just like shake the little can. You really need to mix it because all the pigments are at the bottom. So I stirred that with a stir stick. I wore rubber gloves when I did this and I put two coats of stain on everything. It smells very badly. I would keep it out in a garage or something, not in your house. Especially if you have a dog, it's really, really overpowering for a dog. And when I use a stain, I just use a chip brush. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but they're 50 cents or something crazy low. They're really, really cheap paint brushes and you can buy them in bulk. And so I'll use it for a project and then I don't want to clean it with paint thinner and stuff. So I just throw the chip brush out. I'm letting them dry again overnight by the fire. And I'm really liking how they're turning out. We just have one more step. We will add a dark antiquing wax tomorrow. I love Annie Sloan's dark wax and I use a SIF brush, S-I-F-F. -F. These are my two favorite products when I'm trying to do something like this. And the dark wax just brings up this old patina and highlights all of the imperfections and it's a wonderful product. It also will seal whatever substrate is underneath so then you can get you know, a little water on it or something. So it takes about 30 days to cure when you have a wax as your final finishing layer. To change it in the future, to paint it or something, you treat it just like it's been painted. So don't get weirded out by a wax as the final layer. And as you add the wax, you're just gonna, you don't need very much. Like the top of the stool here, I just dipped my brush one time. It feels like shoe polish and I just, worked it in, you want it to feel real smooth and buttery. You don't want it to feel sticky. You have too much wax, so it feels sticky. So that's what the last step is. I think they turned out really beautiful. They look very rustic, and I can't wait to style them up for you guys. All right, I need to figure out what I'm gonna use for my sign. So I took this. It is a stir stick from Home Depot, and we just cut off the end. I'm gonna sand off the, the numbers and letters and then I'm gonna do this transfer technique with wax paper and put Swanson Chicken Farm on that. For the little sign, the little tutorial within a tutorial, I will link an old tutorial I did on how to do this but it was for raw wood. So I show to dip a cotton ball in water and wring it out and then just swipe the wood to activate it a little bit. I skipped that step this time because I had a stain on there and the water was just repelling right off. And I did it soon enough too that the ink was still wet. So it's a little frustrating. You can see like at the end I slipped up where on the part that says established 1906. But I figure, you know what, maybe that adds to the authenticity authenticity of the look by the old imperfections. So I just need to add a little dark wax to that. And then I want to stick it straight on these dowels, like my inspiration picture. I think I'm just going to maybe Gorilla Glue it on. Wood glue, Gorilla Glue, hot glue, you know. I don't think I'm going to try to nail it right into the uh, dowels. That sounds like something could go very wrong there. <laughs> and for the wax paper, you're just going to cut it down to be the size of a piece of regular printer paper. It literally like sits in the tray like a piece of paper and you print your image, any image that you want. You just need to remember to reverse it. That is a very important step. And that's just right before you hit print on your printer, just kind of dig around in the directions and see what you can find. Mine doesn't say reverse the image, it says flip horizontally. That's on a Mac. So once you have it printed, then be extremely careful because it's very wet and you can smudge it really badly. And you want to cut it down real small and then drop it face down right where you want it. Once it touches, it starts to transfer the image. So be sure when you lay it down, you can't change it. 
and then it's best to tape it down and then work with the back of a spoon carefully working the image onto the wood and you'll see the color change on the wax paper as it transfers onto the wood. It's a really cool hack. All right, so I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. I have more tutorials and printables and eBooks and things that you can access with in my subscriber library. I'll put a link below and I'll get you the password for that if you're interested. In the next video, we will be covering aging furniture by adding to the furniture, not taking away. And as always, thank you so much for stopping by. If you're new here, please consider hitting that subscribe button so that I can send you more videos on how to make interior design easy. All right, I'll talk to you soon.